Hello, um, I apologise in advance. We, this is now going to be a joint presentation because my cat will not clear off. Um, so I apologise to that, that to anybody. Um, I can't see anybody else, but I assume everybody's there. Um, so the practitioners, hang on, I'm going to have to move the cat because otherwise it's going to be in the way. Right, practitioner's guide. Um, guide, it's not a guide. It is the proper practices set down in the Audit Act 2014 that abolished um, the Audit Commission. It predated that when the Light of Touch came in, but the main point with the practitioner's guide is that parts one, two and three are the proper practices that legislation says councils must follow. So parts one, two and three are not a guide, they're the law. Um, you know, you've got no choice on, on following, but to follow them. Um, so what I would always say is make sure that your council has downloaded from the NAUC website or the IAF website or your CALC website, um, the current version, the latest one was issued on the 31st of March, 2022. Um, and yes, there, well, it wasn't an entirely deliberate error, but it was an absolute clangor um, and be interested to know who else spotted it. Um, so parts one, two, one, two, one and two are uh, one, two and three are the. Oh, that's a bit depressing. Haven't looked at it and didn't spot it. But there we go. Um, parts one, two and three are mandatory. We can't change them. They're there. The only people who can change them is JPAG with the with the acceptance of the National Audit Office and the Minister. Parts four and five, which are the bit I was involved with, part four is the guidance for internal auditors. If you and your council haven't got an internal auditor who has read it, why are you using that internal auditor? Because I'll be quite honest, um, they cannot be understanding what they're signing on your internal audit form if they haven't read that. Um, you know, I just, on my other computer, I have the, the current practitioner's guide open. It is not very long. So section four, which was rewritten by the internal audit forum for JPAG in 2021, is it runs from page 24 to page da, 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 da. Uh, hang on, I'm just scrolling for it to, to page 33. Yeah, so it's not very long and it includes a sample internal audit checklist. Again, if your internal auditor is not using a checklist based on the assertions and tests in the inter, in the agar, why are you using them? What are you paying for? What are you getting? Um, because it's the, the, the whole point of the internal auditor is that they are testing the controls that then allow the external auditor to place reliance on what councillors put in section one and two. So section four is for the internal auditors. Section five was the project we worked on last winter. Um, and section five is the guidance for the officers of the council on how to fill out sections one, which is your um, assurance statements, and section two, which is the numbers bit. Let's be honest, Scribe helps you do the numbers bit. That's the bit we all care about. But actually, if you can't place reliance on the numbers, then you have a problem. And the assertions in section one are what allow you to place reliance on the numbers. So section five was basically completely rewritten to make it flow through the agar, but also to support councils during the year on how they keep their records so that at the end of the year, year end is just another month end. Because in a small council, I mean, my, the smallest council I audit has 27 transactions a year. The biggest council I audit has fills a lever arch and a half with purchase invoices every month. So, and they're all both filling out the same form and they're both working from the same guidance, the practitioner's guide. 
it's free to download so there really is no excuse it's a pdf which is great because it means you can search for the words you want um but the main point is in section five it has leads you three through each of the statements in the first part of the agar and it explains what your what you're actually meaning to do how it means in ter what it means in terms of your records and what you've done during the year and the mini minutes you've kept um what you need to keep um and yeah it's a really obvious thing but we did actually include the fact that the ideal answer to every one of those assertions is yes um it's not rocket science but you know um there was an issue this year one of the external auditors decided that all councils have to comply with the transparency code and were politely reminded that that's not what the law says always and all the way through the practitioner's guide one of the things we really 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 um <laughs> i've just seen somebody's popped up with get the documents tidy because um is the auditor <laughs> yeah um, you are um but yeah i mean one of key things we tried to get um into all parts of um the guide is its links there are links to the legislation and the guidance so for example if it says you're the section 151 officer what does section 151 say there is now a link to it in the practitioner's guide um so that if a councillor says well why are we doing it that way the practitioner's guide now has the links to the legislation that says this is why we're doing it that way. And it's also the case that um, you need to well run councils that have good internal controls tend not to make it into the Daily Mail. Um, and any council, any clerk who's listening, who's had me as an auditor knows one of if, if they're saying, should we discuss that at our meeting? my key answer will always be if the daily mail sent a journalist to your meeting and sat and listened would they write up a story if they would you're doing something wrong basically if they wouldn't then you're probably doing something right but the key point is and, it, and it's why i actually love the transparency code and why we've made the practitioner's guide have all the links if you tell people what you're doing um, I saw just before lunch the lady talking about um, all, all the, the warm spaces. They're, that's going to cost money. You're going to be spending money on heating, but it's for the benefit of the community. Um, <laughs> I think some councils may get their own supplement. Yeah, um, there's been some interesting stuff we've seen. But it, so if you explain to the public what you're doing, um, then it's you can put the biggest preset rise through in history. If you increase the preset by 80%, but you increase what the public are getting by 81%, they're happy. And that's the key bit. So you support what you're doing. Uh, we're short of internal audit services. Can we just ask an accountant to work to the JPAG criteria? Anybody can be the internal auditor of a council. It is very, very specifically written into the legislation that there are no requirements on who is an internal auditor um, it does not have to be an accountant some of the best some of the very best and highest profile um internal auditors in the country are not accountants i happen to be an accountant but that's you know we've we've got in in the internal audit forum we had the meeting week before last um some of the, you know quite a few of the calcs run internal audit teams and they often use clerks because a really good experienced clerk um, is often the best person to look at think at, look at stuff. Out of interest, Lisa Clements just asked if you've got shortage of um, auditors. Whereabouts in the country are you? Because we were discussing this in the internal audit forum. We are aware that all oh, right, Cornwall. Yes, there is a very very severe problem in the southwest which hopefully the Internal Audit Forum is going to be working with the Devon and Cornwall ALCs, County Associations, to try to get some more people interested in becoming auditors. Because it's actually, it's quite a cool job. Um, for, the, for those who are have been clerks, it's quite easy to migrate across to. And 
although it is completely mental from April to June, we get August off. I like that bit. Um, you know, I have, my, my kids are grown up. I have never had August childcare because I do all my work through to July and then I take August off. So, you know, if you're thinking of moving across into end to end audit, you won't see your family in April, May and June. I do, this last season I did 76 councils um, and by the end of June I was shattered. But it's really interesting work. You get to go and see what lots of councils are doing. Um, and yes, I mean, there are quite a few internal auditors who are accountancy firms who went, oh, we can do that. The main point is, yes, they've got to work JPEG criteria of um, it's not commercial audit is all about the numbers. Council internal audit starts with the minute book. It starts with has the council taken the decisions it's taken properly at properly convened meetings? Has it done it transparently? Has it done it within the powers of the council? So those three are the key things. It doesn't matter how much the tractor cost, so long as the tractor was bought properly for the right purposes within the powers of the council. Um, so, hey, ah, Lorraine is here. Yes, Lisa, Lorraine may well be your um, answer because um, we very much missed out on Lorraine when she moved away from just here in Hampshire. Um, so yes, we might, might have actually managed to sort out a query there. Um, so yes, yeah, section five was rewritten and it is the, it's guidance for um, clerks and officers and RFOs. It's so, you know, the financial management of the accounts. Are the records being properly minuted? Are the payments being minuted? Are your bank balances being minuted? Um, it's a really key fraud control that the balance held at the bank should be recorded in the minutes every month because several of the very worst frauds involved the bank being cleaned out during the year by the clerk and the council only found out at the end of the year. Um, there's just been one who was jailed earlier in the year who defrauded the councils. There was one several years ago where the clerk had two sets of minute books one of which she used for getting loans from the PWLB, which she then took. That council was so badly hit by that fraud, it had to be abolished. Um, so it's the controls over, and it's also, oh, we trust our clerk? That always scares me because actually you should trust your clerk to be happy for you to rock up and say, can I have a look at the bank statement now? Because if the clerk, doesn't want you seeing the bank statement why not um so it's it's really really key that the councillors as a body corporate not as individuals remember no councillor has power to make decisions outside meetings the councillors as a, as a body corporate are the people who are responsible for um the decisions and the they should then leave the proper officer to get on with it in between meetings. So they shouldn't be micromanaging, but it should be remembered they're in, in control. Um, so yes, I mean, so, so section five was very much, you know, what's what's in there. And if, if your auditor is following the checklist that's in section four, it should lead them to be asking the questions over all of the controls that will then allow you um, to, relax and see what section, sections one and two are about. Because the other side of it is if your internal auditor doesn't understand what they're doing, hasn't heard of the yellow book and so on, when you get an external auditor query and we have had a real problem, there was one particular accountant who just went, well, I've done your sign off accounts. When the external auditor asked questions, the internal auditor didn't understand what they'd done and therefore couldn't support the council with the external auditor queries. Occasionally, the external auditor queries are complete and utter rubbish, and the external auditor needs putting back in their box. An experienced internal auditor will say, but that's not what the practitioner's guide said. So it, we've tried to make it interesting. Um, it, I admit, when we started rewriting it, 
even I got bored reading it. And, you know, anyone who knows me knows that I love talking about audit. I could I could fill the whole day talking about audit. I love it. It's, you know, audit, transparency, budgeting. I love it. But Section 5 was so dull that even auditors stopped reading it. We've now hopefully made it less dull. Um, and just to answer the question at the very beginning, um, the bank rec didn't add up in Section 5 when we first published it. That got spotted very, very quickly. We took it to a meeting of calcs and one of the calcs went, you do know your bank rec doesn't add up because um, I had to do it in a word processor, not a spreadsheet. Again, whenever I see um, financial records kept on word processors, I'm afraid I cringe. Software like Scribe and for the really big count councils, Realtus, there's also Edge, but Scribe is for the medium sized councils and the small councils, which are the bulk of councils. You know, Scribe is cloud. I can access it because you can give an order to read, read access. There is no excuse for keeping record from word processors. Um, questions they, yeah, come, sorry, there's in chat, the auditors don't always know what they're doing. One of the things to bear in mind with external audit is that the current contracts, which are just coming to an end, were let entirely on price. They are cutting corners left, right and centre. We don't know yet who the auditors will be for the next season. They have been allocated, but we're not going to be told for another few weeks. And the way the external auditors work, for any of you who've worked in accountancy firms, it's all first year trainees. And these poor little kids are put in front of parish councils. They're all working in Canary Wharf. There's not many parish councils around there. These poor kids are being asked to understand parish law, which isn't in their accountancy exams. And parishes that, you know, maybe they've been on holiday to a parish, but they don't live near parishes because they're all in central London. Um, is it true the external audit fees are going up significantly under the new contract? If you go to the SAAA website, the fees are already there. Um, they've gone up by about, hang on, let me go to, they've gone up by about 10% uh, audit appointments. No, hang on, let me just see. I'm just on my other computer seeing what the fees are. So a council that is currently paying 200 pounds so a 25 to 50 council will be paying hang on 210 they've gone up 10 percent um but as i say we don't know who the auditors will be it i believe and this is still at the gossip stage we'll find out in a couple of weeks pkf still have the bulk of the contract but bdo have come back in who used to do it, but it's not going to be the same BDO, BDO office, we think. Any auditors are expected to find something. No, to be honest, no. Um, the external audit requirements are written down in NAO guidance, uh, audit guidance note two, which is 26 page checklist that the external auditors have to follow. They have no choice. And it's the same external audit checklist that they, they, they just follow through a checklist. And to be honest, if they can answer all of their questions through analytical review and spend as little time as possible to earn their fee, trust me, they will do it. If they can do it quickly and cheaply, they will, because that's how they make profits. Um, so, no, unfortunately, the trouble is they don't, because a lot of them are first years who haven't done it. Yeah. Um, they, yeah, it's five five percent uplift. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah. The, the, the external auditors. They're, they're, they're not, they're hoping to wing it through really quickly in 15 minutes of checking and make a nice profit. Um, so they don't, and because it's fixed fee, on the ones where they're going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, they're losing money. Um, so yeah, they, they, they would love it to be quicker. Um, and and you know, if you think in terms of their charge out rates, a partner is charged out at 750 pounds an hour so they're aiming to get a small audit, you know, a, a 25,005 pound council. Um, they're hoping to get that done in less than an hour. Um, so that's that's where we are with the auditors. The, the system will not change. There is no impetus coming from central government to change the system. 
or to get rid of the exemptions. Does anybody else have any questions? Because literally fire them on to the chat and I will try and live answer because as, as external audit not completed on time this year. Yeah, um, I, I will give the external auditors a bit of leeway here. They had um, planned to be allowed to get a load of stuff and queries done in the middle of September. And of course, councils were not meeting and they had unexpected hiccups in there um, with a bank holiday and so on. So it was um, with stuff shutting down. So the, the external auditors were, their timings were not sideways, but it is also the case that because they lowballed on price, um, assuming it was PKF, which I know that's who does the vast bulk of the country, um, they, they don't have the resource. Um, and I'm hoping that the new contracts will be better resourced, but I'm not optimistic. Um, and, you know, I mean, I'm also auditing a council that still has not actually submitted their 2021 AGAR to PKF. So there we go. Yes, Welsh, Welsh Audit Wales. I'm, I wish England would go the way of Wales because um, Wales has basically abolished the lighter touch because they did a report um four years ago which is on the welsh audit office of council reviewing councils and they realized that the lighter touch was allowing too much misconduct to go through and so they abolished it um if not completed on time well the the notice goes up is that the timing of the notice goes up relative to when the audit came back um and of course bank holidays don't count for dates so there was a bank holiday in the middle uh do, do, do. Sarah Beckett, does that mean that to make sure the AGAR is being completed truthfully and the internal audit was carried out correctly, the external auditors rely on residents to make an observation? Pickles, remember him in 2010, wanted armchair auditors to do the work. He wanted the public to be the people who held everyone to account. Um, you can thank Eric Pickles for it. Personally, I think abolishing external audit for small councils, which is 6,800 councils, was a catastrophe because there, is, there are no checks that councils are actually under 25,000. Um, so, Mabin, are you in Wales or England? Um, England, they should all have come back. Wales, I, yeah, right, Wales. I'm not sure what the rules are in Wales because they changed their guidance. In England, they should have all come back. But yes, for Sarah's comment about you're relying on a resident, yes, you are. Yeah. Um, main changes between 21 and right for 22, 23, um, we had Derek Kemp, who is the chairman of JPAG, um, saying they are not proposing any major changes to the practitioner's guide this winter. The only thing they're going to change is going to be a little bit about. Um, clarifying large investments in the public sector property, uh, the CCLA property fund, which only affects large councils. Um, and I think a very, very small change in section one and two that contradicted the improvements we put in section five. So no major changes this winter, um, mainly because the internal audit forum have said, we don't want to do any more. And JPEG didn't want to either. Um, yeah, Wales, I, I admit I'm, I've not kept up on Wales because I live in Hampshire. I apologise for that. Um, any other queries just before they before Scribe kick me off the screen? Uh, much, much simpler set of regs. Well, you have if you adopt a much simpler set of regs, make sure they still comply with the law. I would never suggest not using the model because the model has been tested by lawyers. If you use your own version and then get in trouble, you are liable. I would always, always, always say use the model, even if you never refer to 90% of it. Um, so yeah, any any other queries? I'm, I'm just watching the chat. Sorry, my heart eyes are skewed because I'm watching the chat bar. Um, and if there's any queries, do ping them through to Scribe because they then ping them through to me or contact through the Internal Audit Forum website, um, internalauditforum.org.uk. And certainly if, you, if you've got an auditor who you think could do with some backup, get them in touch with us at the Internal Audit Forum and we'll try and make it better. Um, any other, oh, 
lots of nice comments. Any other queries? And yes, it was the bank rec didn't balance in, in section five, which we thought was quite a good clanger. Um, but there we go. Thank you.